Hi, I'm Dr. Annette Valancourt, and today I'm going to do a live tapping about a current issue that I have, which is some pain in my back. One of the things that I'd like to do is teach and tap at the same time. And if you'd like to learn more about tapping, you can visit my website at www.elitesoulmatecoaching.com and click on the button that says, what is EFT? EFT is a form of emotional acupressure that allows you to quickly and easily release emotional pain and physical pain. Today I'm going to be working on some physical pain because I did something in karate to my, sh to my shoulder. So when you're working with physical pain, the first thing you need to do in any EFT protocol is to set up a tapping statement. The tapping statement comes in the form of, even though I have this problem, I deeply love and accept myself. And so in this case, with physical pain, you get very specific. You say, even though I had this stabbing pain in my left shoulder, uh, by my shoulder blade, I deeply love and accept myself. And then what you do once you create your tapping statement is you check in with yourself and you see how intense that pain is right in the moment. So if I check in with myself, I would say that pain is about about a four. It's not as high as it was a minute ago. So you set the pre-tapping intensity so that as you're going through the process and you notice your energy shifting, which is indicated by either a sigh or a yawn, then you'll check in with yourself and you'll see if that number's gone up or down. So it's on a zero to ten scale with zero being no intensity at all and 10 being the worst that you can imagine. So I'm going to start tapping about this pain in my left shoulder and I'm going to demonstrate the points as we go. So as I'm tapping, this is called the karate chop point and you start here. You can choose either hand. Some people say use your dominant hand. Some people say it doesn't matter. I don't really find that it matters all that much, but this is my preferred hand. So as I'm tapping here with two fingers on the fleshy part of the outside of the hand, I'm repeating aloud my tapping statement. So here we go. Even though I have this stabbing pain in the back of my left shoulder, I deeply love and accept myself. Now we do this three times here. What we're doing in this process is we are clearing any resistance to this changing. This seems to clear what Gary Craig calls the tail enders, what in psychology we call the resistance. So we'll do that again two more times. Even though I have this stabbing pain in the back of my left shoulder, I deeply love and accept myself. Even though I have this stabbing pain in the back of my left shoulder, I deeply love and accept myself. So I've done it three times here. Now I'm going to go to the tapping points, which you should be able to see. What the first one is that I bunch my fingers together and it's on the top of my head, on the soft spot on the top of my head, and I'm tapping very gently. I'm not tapping hard, you know, so as to leave any bruises. And I'm going to repeat a shorthand version of the tapping statement instead of the full tapping statement. So instead of saying this stabbing pain, in, even though I have this stabbing pain in my back of my left shoulder, I deeply love and accept myself, I'm just going to say this stabbing pain in the back of my left shoulder. And I'm tapping about seven times on each point. The next point is called the inside of the eyebrow point. Take two fingers and tap near the bridge of your nose at the end of your eyebrow. And again, say your, your reminder phrase, which is the stabbing pain in the back of my left shoulder. Next we go to the outside of the eyebrow near the corner of your eye and repeat your tapping statement again or your reminder phrase, the stabbing pain in the back of my left shoulder. Then we go under the eye, right on the eye socket, but still below the pupil of the eye, this stabbing pain in the back of my left shoulder. Then the next one's called a nose point, but it's actually under the nose. Um, it's in that little dimpled part of, of the lip, upper lip. The stabbing pain in my back left shoulder. Then the next one's called the chin point, but you're tapping really on the dimple part of your chin rather than on the lower part of your chin, so it's right below your lip. This stabbing pain in the back of my left shoulder. Okay, the next one is called the collarbone point, but it's actually just a little off to the left or right 
of that U-shaped bone that we have in the middle of our throat. So it's about an inch to the left or the right. Sometimes what I'll have people do, because they tend to wander as they're tapping, is to just make a fist and tap right in the center. That way you're tapping on both sides of the bone. This dabbing pain in the back of my left shoulder. Now the next point is what I call the chimpanzee point, where you just tap under your arms. It's about four inches from the top of your armpit. And for women, it's it, I say it's right in the middle of your bra strap, and everybody knows where that is. So again, you, re you reach around with your other arm and tap under your, in your armpit and say this dabbing pain in the back of my left shoulder. Now, I've noticed, I don't know if you can tell on camera, that I've sighed already a couple of times. So that's a good sign. Those are the points that we're going to use because that's the the minimum of the basic recipe, then we're going to go back to the top of the head and keep tapping. Okay, this stabbing pain in my left shoulder. Notice that sigh. This stabbing pain in the back of my left shoulder. This stabbing pain and stiffness in the back of my left shoulder. Now I'm adding some other qualities to the pain. This stabbing pain and stiffness in the back of my left shoulder under the nose, the stabbing pain and stiffness in the back of my left shoulder. Chin point, the stabbing pain and stiffness in the back of my left shoulder. Collarbone point, the stabbing pain and stiffness in the back of my left shoulder. Under the arm point, the stabbing pain and stiffness in the back of my left shoulder. Again, I'm tapping about seven times on each one of those spots. <sighs> Notice the sigh, the stabbing pain and stiffness in my left shoulder inside of the eyebrow. The stabbing pain and stiffness in my left shoulder. The stabbing pain and stiffness in my left shoulder. The stabbing pain and stiffness in my left shoulder. The stabbing pain and stiffness in my left shoulder. It's hard to say that sometimes. The stabbing pain and stiffness in my left shoulder in my back. There's another side. This stabbing pain and stiffness in my left shoulder. Under the arm, this stabbing pain and stiffness in my left shoulder. Okay, because I've sighed in a couple of times, I'm going to check in with myself and, and take a deep breath. Let it go. And see how my shoulder feels. Okay, it actually feels a little bit better. I mostly notice the pain up on the top of my shoulder now. This is very common when you're working with EFT to manage pain, is the pain tends to move around the body. Gary Craig calls tapping a way of chasing the pain out of your body. So since the, this is still a little bit in the back of the shoulder, I'd say maybe about a two instead of a four. So when you have remaining pain, what you do is you go back to the karate chop point and you change your tapping statement just a little bit. So I'll say, even though I still have some of this pain and stiffness near my left shoulder blade, I deeply love and accept myself. Even though I still have some of this pain and stiffness in my left shoulder blade, I deeply love and accept myself. Isn't that a nice thing to say? That despite having all these problems, you deeply love and accept yourself. Even though I still have this stabbing pain in my left shoulder blade, I deeply love and accept myself. Okay, now I'm going to change up some of the reminder phrases a little just to show you how when you're working with a trained facilitator, you can vary this some. So I'm tapping on the top of my head. This stabbing pain in my left shoulder blade. This acute pain in my left shoulder blade. Outside the eyebrow. This karate pain in my left shoulder blade. I say that because I think I hurt myself in karate lessons. Yeah, I do take karate under the eye. This stabbing pain in my left shoulder. This stabbing pain near my shoulder blade. I'm ready for this pain to go away. No, I'm not. Yes, I am. On the top of the head. No, I'm not. Yes, I am. Why I tap this way is there's always resistance to change, even if it's physical pain. That somehow the pain may be serving you, and that you need it until you get the message in the pain. Because oftentimes physical pain has an emotional component to it. So as I'm tapping, I'm trying to think of what might be the emotional issue behind this pain in my shoulder. This pain that stops me from doing something. 
this pain that allows me to do something else, this pain that stops me from doing something I don't want to do, this pain that allows me to rest. Ah, there's a big sigh, so maybe there's something to that. This pain that allows me to rest when I can't rest. This pain that allows me to rest when I can't rest. This pain that allows me to not fight. This pain that allows me to rest from fighting. This pain that allows me to rest from fighting. Since I got it in karate, I'm wondering if it has anything to do with fighting. This pain and stiffness that has to do with fighting. This pain and stiffness that has to do with fighting. I feel crippled. This crippling pain. This crippling pain in my left shoulder blade. This stabbing pain in my left shoulder blade. This stabbing in the back. This someone who stabbed me in the back. Oh. <laughs> There's a metaphorical meaning to a lot of physical pain. And sometimes when I'm working with people, especially around stabbing pain, I look for the metaphor of feeling like you're stabbed in the back. Like somebody stabbed you right in the back. And I may have an idea of that feeling. Even though it may not be accurate, my body thinks it is. This being stabbed in the back. This knife in my back. This knife in my back that I can't pull out. This knife in my back that I can't pull out. I'm all crunched up around it. I'm all stiff and tender around it. I can't reach back there to pull it out. I can't reach back there to pull it out. Yet. I always throw in the yet part because we're predicting the future. We're tapping about what's going to be true in a minute, and that is that the pain's going to go away. So this stabbing pain that hasn't gone away yet, this stabbing pain that hasn't gone away yet, this stabbing pain that I think I need, this stabbing pain that's trying to give me an emotional message, this stabbing pain that's trying to give me an emotional message, this stabbing pain that's trying to give me an emotional message, I can't get my attention any other way but this. I can't get my, see me smiling. Sometimes that physical pain is the only thing that gets my attention. And that may be true for you too. The stabbing pain that's trying to tell me something emotional. It's getting my, it's really got my attention now. It's really got my attention now. <sighs> so notice the, notice the eye. It's really got my attention now. It's really got my attention now. I'm really wondering what the message is in the pain. I'm really wondering what the message is in the pain. I'm open to receiving the message in the pain. I'm open to receiving the message in the pain. I'm open to receiving the message in the pain and dealing with the stabbing in the back. I'm ready to deal with the stabbing in the back. No, I'm not. Yes, I am. No, I'm not. Yes, I am. I don't know what to do about the stabbing in my back. I don't know what to do about being stabbed in the back. I don't know what to do about being stabbed in the back except suffer. Suffer and wait it out. Okay, I lost my camera. Sorry. Give me a minute. Okay. I don't know what to do about this, but I can figure it out. I don't know what to do about this, but I can figure it out. I'm ready for the pain to go away. I'm ready for the pain to go away. I think I'm getting the message. I think I'm getting the message. Notice this, the yawning. I think I'm getting the message. My body's ready to release the pain. I like to do this. Uh, Bye-bye pain. Bye-bye pain and stiffness. 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 Bye-bye. Bye-bye pain. Bye-bye pain. Bye-bye pain. Bye-bye pain. I choose relaxation instead. I choose relaxation instead. Relaxation and calm. Relaxation and confidence. I know how to handle this. I know how to handle this. I know how to handle this. I know how to handle the stabbing in the back. Okay, let me take a look. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. It's a lot better. Okay, what I'm kind of doing right now is I'm testing to see if I can make the pain come back. This is a real important part of EFT and something that a lot of people leave out. That when you clear something or it's beginning to clear, they forget to test it. Uh, because the reason you test is there can be multiple aspects to any issue. So as I'm... Okay, that used to really hurt. I still feel a little stiffness. 
but it's a lot better than what it was. Okay. So there's still stiffness up at the top of the shoulder. So now I'm going to focus on that because the pain just might be moving. So I go back to the karate chop point and I would call this pain, it's really like a knot in my muscle on my left shoulder. Uh, I'm going to call this about a, about a three. It's not really acute, but it's just a knotted up tense muscle. So I'm going to create a little different tapping statement for that. It's still related to the original pain, but it's got a different quality and location. So my new tapping statement is, even though I have this knot in the muscle on the top of my shoulder, I deeply love and accept myself. Even though I have this knot in the top of the muscle on my left shoulder, I deeply love and accept myself. Even though I have this top knot in the top of my muscle on my left shoulder, I deeply love and accept myself. Okay, top of the head. I'm all tied up in knots. Inside the eyebrow, I'm all tied up in knots. Outside the eyebrow, I'm all tied up in knots. Inside of the eyebrow, under the eye, I mean, I'm all tied up in knots over this. Under the nose, I'm all tied up in knots about this, the chin point. My shoulder's all tied up in knots about this. Collarbone point, I'm all tied up in knots about this. Under the arm, I'm all tied up in knots about this. Top of the head, at least half of me is. <laughs> Inside the eyebrow, at least half of me is tied up in knots. Outside the eyebrow, at least half of me is tied up in knots. And see, the significance here is that I'm left-handed. So this is this is the hand that I and the arm that I use to do lots of things. So maybe that is trying to tell me something about moving ahead or staying still. So I'm fighting moving ahead. I need to stay still. I'm fighting moving ahead. Or maybe I need to stay still. I'm all tied up in knots about this. I'm all tied up in knots about this. Chin point. I'm all tied up in knots about this. Again, notice I'm doing about seven taps on each one of these things. Big sigh. <sighs> Collarbone point. I'm all tied up in knots about this. Under the arm. Half of me. Half of me knows what to do. The other half of me doesn't. Top of the head. Half of me knows what to do. The other half of me doesn't. I'm just all tied up in knots about this. I'm just all tied up in knots about this. I'm tied up in knots about this. When I exaggerate the movement that the tied up in knots, um, and I still feel a really tight knot right there. If I exaggerate the movement, it's kind of like, ah, uh, you know, leave me alone. So let's tap about that. Even though I want to be left alone. I want whoever's stabbing me in the back to leave me alone. I want whoever's stabbing me in the back to leave me alone. I want whoever's stabbing me in the back to leave me alone. I want whoever I think is stabbing me in the back to leave me alone. I just want to be left alone because it's just tying me up in knots. It's tie this knot I have at the top of my left shoulder. The, the, I don't know what this muscle is called. It's tra trapezius or something. I wish I knew, it, but I'm not. And not good. There's a, now there's a, I notice there's a soreness, so I'm going to change the tapping a little bit. The soreness in this muscle at my, near my neck and shoulder. The soreness in the muscle near my neck and shoulder. The soreness in the muscle near my neck and shoulder. This soreness in the muscle near my neck and shoulder. This soreness in the muscle near my neck and shoulder. You can just do a basic recipe and just very simply focus on this soreness in, my, in the muscle in my left shoulder. You don't have to get fancy with the tapping statements. Sometimes that's what causes people to give up, is they think they've got to get fancy with the tapping statements. In fact, at an advanced level, once you're, you've practiced this for a while, you don't even have to use the tapping statements. <sighs> the purpose of the tapping statements really is just to focus in on the problem. You're not tapping it in, you're not reinforcing it, you're aiming at it, is a way to think about it. So you're aiming very specifically at the soreness and the, now that feels less, less tight. Now it's moved up to here where it's kind of soreness. Now it's a pain in the neck. <laughs> this pain in my neck. 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 
this pain in the left side of my neck, this soreness in the left side of my neck. Okay, it's feeling a little bit better now. This soreness in the left side of my neck. I think I said it started with the three. We'll check in a minute. This soreness in the left side of my neck. This pain in my neck. This pain in my neck. Okay. So I'm testing the arm. So I'm not getting the stabbing pain in my arm like I was before. This seems to have relaxed some, although it's a little bit tender. This is still really tender, so I've got some additional work to do, to do on that. So just for the sake of keeping this, uh, keeping this video short, I wanted to demonstrate how to use EFT on a, on a real problem. What I'll do is I'll continue to tap about this soreness um, and any other pain that I feel around, around this issue until I've cleared them. And then again, what I'll do is I'll test. I'll either test by actually moving my arm and, and pressing on the parts that are sore until they're gone. Or um, if I were doing some other form that I couldn't actually physically test it, I would test it using uh, my imagination. But tune in for later videos so that I can show you how to do the testing for uh, emotional pain rather than physical pain. And thank you for visiting. I'm Dr. Annette Ballancourt. I'm the Elite Soulmate Coach, and you can visit me at my website and learn more about EFT and how I apply it to helping people manifest their soulmates at www.elite-soulmatecoaching.com. Thank you, and I wish you much love and abundance.